NBA records. They're milestones set by generations of players throughout NBA history. And records aren't things that players ever really go into a game trying to break, but when it does happen, it's a big deal. Because that new player's name goes down in the record books for years until somebody comes along and breaks their record. Now with that said, in the NBA there's a long list of records that have been deemed unbreakable. And while some without a doubt are at this point, I found others that I truly believe can be broken by this generation of players. And based on their skill sets, I can see certain players breaking records that have stood for over 50 years. So let's look at the first record of one quadruple double, a feat so rare it's only ever been done four times throughout NBA history, since blocks and steals have been recorded. And no player has ever done it more than once. Nate Thurman did in 1974, Alvin Robertson in 86, followed up by Hakeem Olajuwon, who recorded his own in 1990, and almost recorded another one the very same season, which would have made him the only player to do it twice, but he came up just one assist shy of it. Then the most recent official quadruple double was put up 26 years ago by David Robinson. And seeing how rare and far apart all of these games have been is why people have said it's impossible that a player would ever pull it off twice in their career. But honestly, we've seen a couple more people come pretty close to it happening in recent years. Like when Tim Duncan actually recorded maybe the most impressive quadruple double that the league has ever seen with 21 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists, and 10 blocks in the 2003 NBA Finals but officials only credited him with 8 blocks, even though if you watch it back, he really did have 10. Andre Kurlenko came pretty close to putting up a few in his career, while Michael Carter-Williams almost put up a quadruple-double with steals in his first ever NBA game. Then in 2017, Draymond Green recorded a triple-double without points. He got the 10 steals, but only ended up with 4 points. And with that said, there is a small possibility that Draymond is able to record a quadruple double before his career is over. But to break the record and have 2 quadruple doubles, I think Anthony Davis has by far the best opportunity to do so. And honestly, a couple years ago I really thought he would have recorded one by now with how versatile he is as a player, and with all the bad years he spent on Pelicans. Shockingly though, the men's only had one career triple double and it was in 2018 with 10 blocks instead of assists. With that being said though, he's only had one triple double, but he really almost put up a quadruple double of his own in 2015 when he put up 36 points, 14 rebounds, 9 blocks, and 7 assists. So it is possible. The only downside though is he's never been a great passer and I don't think that he's ever even had 10 assists in a game. But seeing how he's still only 26 years old, and looks like he'll probably be on playoff teams from here on out, he's going to have a lot more players to pass to and will become more of a team player, which will give him a better opportunity at a quadruple double. And if he makes that slight transition in his game, I wouldn't be surprised to see him having recorded two within the next six or seven years. And that one's actually pretty realistic, while this next one might not seem like it as much. Because most people would say that Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point NBA game is one of the most unbreakable records across all of sports. But I truly believe it's possible in that Clay Thompson could be the one to break it. Alright, and I know that probably seems like an odd choice at first, but it's really not. In Chamberlain's 100 point game, as we know, he obviously did it with zero 3 point attempts, since there wasn't even a 3 point line back then. And since there is today, you would think that it leaves an opening to break the record. I mean, we saw Kobe score 81 and Devin Booker score 70. The big advantage that Wilt did have though over a player today is that he played every single second of the 48 minute game where he scored 100. But as we know we've seen some of the hottest hot streaks in the history of the NBA from Klay Thompson. Like his 60 points in 3 quarters and more specifically in only 29 minutes of play. In Chamberlain's 100 point performance he scored 2.08 points per minute. In Clay's, he scored 2.07 points a minute. He was scoring at just about the same pace as Wilt was. And to compare their games even further, even though up until the end of the third quarter, Wilt had played more minutes than Clay Thompson, if you think about it, at the end of the third, Wilt had scored 69 points, and Clay had scored 60, so he really wasn't all that far off. And that's just one instance where Clay shown his potential for this record. The other was obviously Thompson's game where he put up 37 points in a single quarter. And his pace in that 12 minute span blew Wilts out of the water. He only ended up finishing with 52 points in total, so realistically he hasn't come close to 100 points yet. Just imagine he starts a game off with a 37 point quarter again one day, then on a night that he's that hot, he only needs 21 a quarter for the next 3. 
and I get it's not necessarily the most likely, but there's a very slim possibility, and if anyone's gonna beat the record one day, I think it'll have to be done on one of Clay Thompson's hot streaks. But I feel that Scott Skiles' all-time record of 30 assists in one game is a lot more achievable. He set the record back in 1990, and it's stood strong ever since then. John Stockton has come the close to ever breaking it when he put up 28 assists in 1991. And since then, retired players Kevin Johnson and Jason Kidd both had 25 assist games at one point, while Russell Westbrook and Rajon Rondo have been the closest current day players. And while both players were the league's best chances of this happening, they aren't in the position to break the record anymore. Rondo's on limited minutes these days, while Westbrook's playing with James Harden. So we had to look for someone else that may be able to break this 30-year-old NBA record. And there's an important fact here to mention that in this historic game, Scott Skiles also had 22 points which does make the record that much more impressive, but also means that he had a lot of extra possessions that another player in a similar situation could choose to score less and pass more to break the record. As for who would break it though, I mean just looking across the NBA today, the only obvious answer would be a guy like Chris Paul, but if it's not him, I hate to give an answer like this, but honestly it could just be anyone. Meanwhile, Skiles set that record, he was a random backup point guard for the Magic that was only averaging 4.6 assists at the time, so it really just takes a random game where everything's going right for a player. I don't know exactly who's gonna break it, but I do feel like it will be broken one day down the line. Then this next record is held by Michael Jordan and is for two straight playoff games scoring 50 points. It might not sound like it's a difficult record, let alone an unbreakable one but it is. As we know, the playoffs are when everything's turned up. It's a lot less about one individual player and a lot more about how the team performs as a whole. So it's rare for a player to record 40 points in the playoffs, let alone 50. As a matter of fact, only six players currently in the NBA have scored 50 points during the playoffs, and none of them have done it more than once, with the six being Isaiah Thomas, Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, Vince Carter, Damian Lillard, and Kevin Durant. So yeah, James Harden isn't even one of them. But just to put it into comparison, Michael Jordan scored at least 50 points 8 times in the playoffs. So yeah, no one's currently done it more than once, but to break this record, someone would have to do it twice, well, actually 3 times in a row. And as for who I could see breaking the record, well, some people might say James Harden, but come playoff time he's not the same, which is why he's never had a 50 point game. Steph Curry will be great once he comes back, but I can't see him scoring 50 three times in a row. Kevin Durant didn't do it before his Achilles, so I don't think he's going to do it after. LeBron and Anthony Davis have each other to split the load, or else it could have been one of them, and Russell Westbrook's not consistent enough. But I could honestly see it happening with a guy like Damian Lillard. Well, that is once his team gets good enough to actually make the playoffs again. But when they do, I could see it. His only 50 point playoff game that he's had came when he waved away the Thunder to close out that series. But as we know, he comes up in big moments. So say the Blazers get down 3 games to 2 in a series, there's no question I could see Lillard putting up at least 50 in the last 2 games to lead his team to the next round. Then possibly starting out the next series hot and recording a 3rd straight game of 50 plus. Now I get it's not the most likely scenario of the video, but I definitely wouldn't be surprised if it did happen one day. I am surprised though that some people consider this next record unbreakable, and it's for the largest margin of victory in NBA history, when the Cavs beat out the Heat by 68 points in 1991, and the final score came down to be 148-80. to now it's impressive and everything, but honestly with all the terrible teams we've seen throughout the years, I'm surprised that this record wasn't higher, and that's why I won't be surprised when it is eventually broken. The tricky thing about this though, is when a team hits a 30 point lead or so, they usually put their bench players in. So for this to be broken, a team would have to find themselves up like 30 at halftime, have their entire bench in for the second half, and then have them outscore the other team by at least 40. And as for who's gonna break it, the losing team at this rate will probably be the Knicks one day, while the winning team could really be anyone on a good night. And a lot of these records have been my own opinions on if someone or who will break them. But I think we can all easily agree that the record for most all-time triple doubles, with 181 held by Oscar Robertson since his career ended in 1974, will most definitely be broken by Russell Westbrook pretty soon. And this one had to be included, because a few years ago before he started averaging a triple double, it was by far thought of as one of the most unbreakable records in NBA history. And we never thought that anyone would even come 
close to this record. I mean, I remember back in 2014, Lance Stevenson led the NBA in triple doubles with five. And even that was a big deal around the league that he led everybody. But I mean, now look at things. Russ gets at least 20 every year. And with how the game's played as a whole, everyone gets more triple doubles now. We see one almost every night and it's really not as rare as it used to be. I mean, look at things currently. At 20 years old, Luka Doncic is already leading the league this season with 12. And that brings up the next point. Russ might take their all-time record from Oscar Robertson, but I don't think he's gonna have it long because I think there's no doubt that when it's all said and done, and maybe just by the time he even reaches his prime, Luka Doncic is gonna have obliterated Russell Westbrook's record. He's already at 20 for his career, and if you think about it, it took Russ until his eighth season in the league to get that many. So that record's definitely getting broken one way or another. This next one though, not so sure about. And that's the record for the most three-pointers ever made in a season with 402, which Steph Curry said in his 2015 and 16 MVP season. In 2014 and 15, he had also set the record with 286 threes, then destroyed it the next year by almost 120. Since then though, last year a few people came surprisingly pretty close to beating it, and with the way the game's developed, it makes sense. Even with how it's developed though, players are still gonna have a very hard time ever breaking this one. Because look at it like this. In Steph's season, he played 79 games, attempted 11.2 three-pointers, and shot 45% from three, making 5.1 of them. Now just to put that in perspective, that's a better percentage than Harden shot as a whole on field goals in general in 9 of his 11 seasons in the league. But let's look at what it would take for someone to actually break it though. And I did some maths. NBA players usually play an average of about 78 games a season and shoot about 36% from three, which would mean to make 5.1 a game like Steph did, they would have to take 14.4 threes a game. So that means they would have to shoot more threes than Harden took last season when he averaged 36 a game. They would have to take just about as many threes as Giannis is taking shots this season and shoot more threes per game than anyone has in NBA history. So honestly, this record's pretty far out there, unless someone gets their percentage up to around Steph's level. And honestly, if there's going to be any one person I could see doing it, it would probably be Trey Young. He would need to really work on his shot though, because while he's overall in a much bigger role than Steph was at his age, his percentages aren't even close to what Curry's were. But again, Trey's only 21. And if he keeps shooting as much as he does, his shot's going to get that much better every year. And I wouldn't be surprised that if in four or five years, Trey Young is able to take over Steph Curry's record. Again, he's not ever going to do it as efficient as Steph did, but it is possible. And then the last unbreakable record that will be broken is almost a guarantee at this point. And that's the record for all time points. At 38,387 total points scored by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I made a video about how close LeBron was to breaking it about a year and a half back. Well, here's an update. He's still right on track to do it. With him at the making of this video sitting at 33,878 total points. About 4,500 points off the record. And currently he's still averaging 25 a game. So at this rate, by the end of this season, he's going to need about a total of 3,900 more points. And follow along here. If you look at it like this, that 25 points per game in a season is about 1,950 points. It means that if he averages 25 a game for the next two seasons after this one, which looks very very likely, it'll give him exactly enough to become the number one all-time scorer in NBA history. And that's going to be one of the biggest moments in league history, and a record that then may never be passed again. So comment down below and tell me which record you're most excited to see get broken. If you enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.